WWE superstar Big E suffered a fractured neck during this suplex, and in this video, we're gonna take a closer look at what exactly happened. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dr. Brian Suter. It was a very real injury concern earlier tonight on SmackDown when former champ Big E was stretchered off with a brace around his neck. The former champ himself gave us an update from the hospital about what actually happened with his injury. Uh, I can move all my digits. You see that? That's nice. That's always a good thing. Um, strength feels fine, but unfortunately, uh, right now, they tell me my neck is broken. So Big E appears to have suffered a cervical spine fracture. Certainly a very serious injury, but he's extremely fortunate that, at least from his video, it seems like there was no neurologic damage. While serious, a fracture is much easier to repair and treat than if you have spinal cord damage, which could be permanent, resulting in paralysis. The suplex is a really dangerous move if not performed correctly, and here you can see that Big E just doesn't rotate over enough to where he lands more square on his back with his neck sort of tucked forward to where he just kind of rolls on the back of his head. Here he doesn't rotate enough, and so as he lands, he gets this extreme axial compressive force basically going directly from the ground straight into the top of his head, compressing those bones of the cervical spine. There's probably a little bit of flexion, maybe some extension in here that we just can't appreciate, but the majority of why this is so severe is because of that axial force from the top of his head, compressing the bones of the spine downward. This is the reason why spear tackling was removed from football, because your neck becomes really compromised whenever you lower it and have a subsequent axial traction or force directed into the top of the head. We also saw him stiffen up a bit, and so it wouldn't surprise me if he also suffered a brain injury or a concussion on this impact because of, again, that load to the top of the head being transmitted through to the brain. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, I've highlighted, of course, the skull and then the bones of the cervical spine or cervical vertebrae, as we call them. There's seven cervical vertebrae, and what we're gonna do here is hide the skull so that we can focus more directly on them. The first cervical vertebrae is called the atlas. Of course, in mythology, atlas kind of held the world. And so the atlas is C1. It's the bone that basically holds the skull. Fractures to this atlas typically occur with some sort of axial compression, sort of like what we saw here with Big E. Now, there's actually a name for these types of fractures. We call them Jefferson fractures, and we classify them based on how many components that fragment is broken into because that defines how stable it's gonna be with those components expanding outward like a ring. The good thing about C1 fractures is generally there's lower chance of spinal cord injury because there's a lot of space for the spinal cord to live. So this vertebral canal where the spinal cord travels is much bigger up there at C1 than it is compared down lower, you can see through here at kind of the lower cervical vertebrae. So C1, the atlas, specific types of fracture, a Jefferson fracture. Moving down to C2 is the bone referred to as the axis. The axis is unique because it has this little protrusion right here that we call the dens. Now, axis fractures can again be classified based on where they occur through this dens. The challenge is now as we're getting further down, that space for the spinal cord is getting tighter, and so fractures of these cervical vertebrae run more risk of injuring that cervical spinal cord. As we work our way down the rest of the cervical spine, a lot of the vertebrae look very similar. Interestingly, one thing to note is that there's a little hole, a little channel here on the outside of these lower cervical vertebrae. This little hole is interestingly where one of the arteries in our neck, the vertebral artery, passes up to get up to the brain. So if you have fractures of these bones, you run some risk of injury to that vertebral artery. If we think about the mechanism of that suplex, that axial force is all coming down in this direction. So what it's gonna do is it's going to compress that vertebral column. When you straighten the neck, you lose that natural curvature that helps to absorb the shock and so you make the spinal column more susceptible to being broken. So far, there's no word on if he's going to need surgery or not, but honestly, as bad as a broken neck sounds, they don't always require surgery. Depending on where the fracture is, how displaced or how many fracture fragments there are, sometimes they can simply be treated by wearing a hard cervical collar like we saw Big E already wearing in the video. Obviously, if he has to undergo a surgery, then things will get more complicated, but so far it's extremely reassuring to hear that he doesn't appear to have suffered any significant spinal cord damage because that's obviously going to be a much harder thing to reverse and fix and can result in more disability long term. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.